According to Nvidia, for $20 a month, you can make this run like this with their new RTX 3080 tier of GeForce Now. So today, we're gonna make that very comparison, which seems like it's gonna go very well, considering that they have this line in the fine print. But before that, a quick word from today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Be Quiet and their Lightwing RGB fans. Now I can talk for ages about their high quality construction, powerful and quiet airflow, and how beautifully diffused their RGB is. But the most important thing you need to know about the Be Quiet Lightwings is that they don't use some stupid proprietary RGB connector. They just use the stupid standard one, which is way better. So if you're interested in some sexy Be Quiet Lightwing fans, check the link in the description below. Thanks again Be Quiet for sponsoring today's video. Aside from being able to say that you essentially have a timeshare in an RTX 3080, the main benefit going with the new Baller Plus tier of GeForce Now is going from 1080p 60 frame per second gaming to 1440p 120 frame per second gaming, which seems very promising if they can deal with the main Achilles heel of cloud gaming, which is latency. But that's one of the main things that we're going to be testing today, and we'll also have a quick look at the 4K HDR option for the shield. Now in terms of the PC, I'm going to be using this bad boy for the comparison, which as you can see is quite a beefy RTX 3080 based system. And then when it comes to the GeForce Now side of things, I'll also be testing pretty much a best case scenario in terms of internet speeds and latency. The only way that I could get a lower ping was by physically moving into the data center. But anyway, with that, let's set a baseline expectation for cloud gaming by having a look at the standard priority tier running on an Nvidia Shield Pro just to see how it holds up these days. Initially, GeForce Experience on the Shield was playing hard to get because Assassin's Creed Odyssey just refused to launch. And after struggling with it for a while, I gave up and moved over to Cyberpunk, which did launch. In all honesty though, if you take into account the render resolution compared to the fact that this is a 4K monitor, it doesn't look that terrible, although it does run pretty terribly. Although there may be something we can do about that. I don't know why RT is on, that, that seems really stupid. So let's turn that off, apply. You can feel that the frame rate's higher. The problem is just that the movement is so unsmooth. Look at that stutter. Moving over to Fortnite, the stutter was less prominent, but still there despite the game reporting 120 frames per second. It feels okay, like this is not great because there is the occasional kind of stutter when it comes to movement, but it's not too bad. And while the input latency was definitely better than Cyberpunk, it was still noticeable. Oh! <laughs> I'm just gonna blame that on the latency. And after being humiliated by a 12 year old, I decided to try out the priority version of GeForce Now on the main test system to see if the stutters are linked to the Nvidia Shield. I think it runs a little bit better on, oh, I don't know, I don't even know. Look at those stutters, man. There are brief bits where it runs a bit better, but it's still in the same ballpark of like a random stutteriness. Oh, these stutters! Although, again, moving over to Fortnite, things definitely got better. It definitely runs better on this system than it does on the Shield. The Shield Pro isn't as good at running GeForce Now as, as it should be, in my opinion. We're still getting stutters, though. It's not a perfect experience, but it's a lot more usable. And the input latency was still not great, but good enough to be usable in a pinch. Oh, and on this system, after only a little bit of struggling, Assassin's Creed Odyssey actually launched, but it looks kinda terrible. But it makes sense that it looks terrible, right? You're streaming gameplay at 1080p on a 4K display, it, it makes sense. So the visuals aren't the issue for me. The problem is the stuttering, like look at that. Uh, so it's defaulted to high, with all of this stuff on high, high, ultra, whoa, it's it's cranked it with ray tracing on and DLSS, that's, that's weird. Uh, video settings wise, we're now at 1440p. <laughs> well, according to Cyberpunk, we're definitely not getting that promised 120 frames per second. And when I actually tried to play the game, things got worse. It, it feels a lot more input laggy. 
Whoa, it feels so much more input laggy than it did before. <laughs> what? It, it looks a lot better. Um, and, you know, we've got a much more stable frame rate than we did before. But the input lag, I don't know how well this is showing up on camera, but it feels like I'm moving in molasses. Like it is, it's a really weird kind of input lag as well. Okay, so I've dropped the settings to high and it's definitely better. It's still there a little bit, but it doesn't feel as bad as it did before. Ooh, car, ow. Wow, with Fortnite by default, the settings are pretty cracked. It's at 1440p, 120 frames per second, and it's just, it's just very, very high. Let's turn motion blur off and then see how it runs this. Whoa, it, it runs Fortnite really well. It looks very good and the frame rate's consistent. Input lag is fine. Like this, this is actually really impressive. Like this, <laughs> this is, it's running it way better than I was expecting. Assassin's Creed does look better, but it's still quite compression artifacty, especially, ow, I was busy showing the compression artifacts. Please go away, wolf. Now, Assassin's Creed looks quite compression artifacty still, uh, especially in the sky up here. At least the stutter is way better. That, that makes a big difference. Control also ran impressively well, but at this point I was ready to try out the real system. Whoa, even without DLSS, it seems to be running a little bit better than GeForce Now with DLSS. I wonder if I'm gonna be able to feel a difference. Oh, it, it feels so much better, whoa. It feels so much snappier, like this feels like you're running the game on the system. So after the real 3080 just absolutely decimated the online 3080 in Cyberpunk, uh, let's see what it does with this. Oh, it's so much better. Oh, it, it feels so much better. There's none of that compression artifact anywhere. Oh, it's, it's, so, it's so much better. The way that I was testing this whole experience was I started off with the base GeForce Now running on the shield and moved my way up from there. So that's why the upgraded version of GeForce Now on the PC felt so good. But now that I'm feeling what just physical hardware feels like, it's just, it's, it, it's a whole different ball game. And then the other advantage that we have with just the physical RTX 3080 is that we're not limited to 1440p. We can crank it up to native 4K if we want to. D don't get me wrong. Fortnite runs very well with GeForce Now, uh, both tiers actually. It's, it's the game that I think responds the best to this kind of cloud service gaming. And obviously not everybody can have a very expensive gaming system, but the main advantage that the real PC has isn't the visuals, it's the gaming feel. And even a much cheaper PC would still have that advantage. So now that I've had the experience of the big PC, I've gone back to Fortnite now uh, and I've applied the same competitive settings. So everything low with epic draw distances at uh, 1440p. And don't get me wrong, Fortnite specifically, not really the other games, but Fortnite runs really well. Like this is a very impressive cloud gaming experience. And if you're lucky enough to live somewhere where GeForce Now is available and this is your only option, it's pretty good. But it feels like there's very heavy smoothing applied. It's just so different. It's, it's a lot more different than I was expecting it to feel. On that note, let's see if the RTX 3080 tier of GeForce now saves the gaming experience on the Nvidia Shield Pro. Now, interestingly, with the Shield, it prioritizes resolution over frame rate. And that's one of the things that they tell you on the, on the site as well, that uh, with the Shield, you can go to 4K, HDR as opposed to 1440p is the max resolution, but there is a lot more input lag now. So let's try and play some and then see how it goes. Yeah, this is this is not usable. Like let's let's actually try and drop the resolution because it does look very nice, but there is this just stutter artifact that it kind of hurts your eyes. Look at that weird movement artifact. What is that? 
And it still does it with this more expensive tier, which makes me think that it's definitely the shield's fault. Like it, it is, it is legitimately giving me a headache. Like this is, <laughs> this is not great. After complaining about a headache like a little baby, I decided to do some more direct comparisons between the 3080 tier and a real 3080. Now in terms of games I could use for benchmarks, I had a very limited amount of options because, well, overlays and stuff like that didn't work with GeForce Now, but the built-in benchmarks for a couple games did seem to work. So let's have a look at some real numbers. So not only do games look quite a lot better on a real RTX 3080 because you don't have those gross compression artifacts that you need to worry about, but the actual frame rate is also quite a lot lower in the games that I tested. So the RTX 3080 tier doesn't really seem to perform like an RTX 3080, even with the best case scenario that I'm running here. So at the end of the day, what do I think of the RTX 3080 tier of GeForce Now? Well, first off, it's got a terrible name. It runs worse than a 3080, it feels worse than a 3080, and it looks worse than a 3080. So why are you drawing that comparison to your own product? Just They should have called it something cool, like the landed gentry tier or something. Uh, but other than that, relatively pedantic note, uh, in terms of just usability, the service is quite inconsistent. Of the six games that I tested, Granted, three of them did run very well, especially Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Fortnite, uh, but two of the games ran quite poorly, and I had intermittent problems launching the games on various configurations, and then the sixth game, uh, Battlefield 5, for some reason just didn't work on any configuration ever. So this inconsistency mixed with the fact that you've got quite a limited games library that you can use with this service, that thousand plus games sounds impressive, but I was surprised at how few of the games I owned and play are actually supported by GeForce Now. I think that it's very hard to recommend as like a versatile gaming solution. However, if you have a potato PC that for some reason you're trying to use to drive a high refresh rate 1440p monitor and you live in one of like five places in the world and you have very good internet and the only games that you play are Fortnite maybe with a bit of Shadow of the Tomb Raider then yeah I'd say it's worth a try. It might be an expensive service but you can cancel it if it doesn't work for you. Uh, for everybody else though yeah, I, d I don't, I don't think it's, it's really that worth it. But anyway, with that, thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. And um, yeah, until the next video, bye-bye.